Oh man, dynamic routing in React and Next.js. So in this video, I'm gonna show you is how to actually create a dynamic route, which is basically a page that where the name of the page is generated dynamically from say some JSON or from a database. In this demo, I'm going to just be using JSON because it's gonna basically, you know, it transfers over if you're using a database. But it's so fun. It does have a few nuances I wanna show you because I wanna show you one, um, how do you actually pull, you know, a dynamic route when you actually create a dynamic route, right? And you want to pull data from that route. Typically, you need to rely on some information from there and then do some function. The problem is that depending on how you do it, you typically get undefined on the first load of the page and that creates a big problem. So you have to make sure you have to wait for the route to ensure you got it. You also don't want it to execute too, multiple times or too many times. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm also gonna show you how to use the pure Next.js way, which actually avoids some of that stuff. Although I typically use option one for a lot of my things, I'm gonna show you three more options where you don't necessarily need to rely on state and use effect and things like that. So let's just get started. If you guys like front end development, React, Next.js, CSS, hit that like button and let's go. Just go ahead and create a boilerplate create next app, which is what I already did in the home. We're not gonna do anything in the home. What we're gonna do is do a dynamic route. Go ahead and create a directory inside of um, your pages and you can go ahead and just call it blog, okay? The next thing is inside of that, you're gonna create a dynamic route and it works like this. So we're gonna go new file, brackets name dot JS. And this is Next.js's way of having dynamic routing. Basically, this is important. The word name is key because what it is, it resembles the name of the parameter. So you need to, if you want that to be ID or name, that's how you're gonna pull the information. You could have an index page here and that'll be your main blog page, your home page. but then the name is where it is the dynamic route. So let's just do some basic boilerplate setup here stuff. Import use state and use effect. Now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and create our JSON file, which is basically going to resemble what is from our database. It's just a list of blogs. So and I'm gonna put it under it under the folder called data. Um, and it's just you know an array of objects. So we're going to put that in our data folder and I'm going to just call it data.json. So right now, if you go here under blog, right? If you go to blog, we have nothing. So we're going to import use router that's critical because that's the next router that does all of the work for us so let's go ahead and import the data import data as an object from this json file and now that json will be available in something called data and that's important because that's what we're going to be using so that we need to cross check when someone puts the blog post in the title it finds the title in the json and then displays the information so we're going to say const router right? This is just boilerplate stuff. Query that's coming through router.query, we're calling it name, and that has to match up with this um, information. So it's basically saying whatever comes in, I want it to be referenced here called name. Let's just do a use effect. So we're going to just say console log that. But now let's actually just try to display console log the test. So if you check here, we got the test, right? So whatever you change here, you're gonna say test four. You're gonna see that that's a dynamic query. That's a dynamic name that's being entered. It's giving us like the dynamic query. And now we need to look for stuff in the database to make sure, you know, to display the data. So now, if you notice, there's one big problem to this, which is there's, it's coming in first as undefined. That is a huge problem, and that's what a lot of people run into because if you if you get the router and then you try to do functions, you have nothing defined, so you're never gonna, it's not gonna work. I wanna show you how to fix that, and I'm gonna show you some other few ways to avoid it. Map over our data. I have some stuff I'm gonna copy and paste just so we don't, you know, save some time here. So we're gonna on use effect on the first, so we wanna say, the empty array dependency, getting the item and saying, here's what we want to do. Actually, you know what? Let's let's actually walk through this. Name is the query, but we're we're mapping over this JSON. We're saying if this name equals this one, right? Because that's what we want to be. I want to pull this other information. I don't want anything else. So I want to see if what is being submitted actually ref matches up to here. Then we want to say set the description, right? So we, we want to pull the description. So we're going to say we're going to give a We'll give a const, you know, a description in state equals use state 
So now we have basically a state that's empty. And if we display the state here called description, if you find this, set the description to the item.name and the item.description. If what's entered here is the same, now here's the problem that people run into. The problem is that the router is not fully ready when the page loads. So all this work we're doing shows nothing because we haven't checked if the router is ready. So here is one of the really important lines of code that we want to make sure before we start mapping this stuff that the router is available. So it goes if the router that is ready, if it's not ready, then just stop. But if it's ready, continue. You do here, I was entering the wrong parameter. So it is actually title one, not test one. So title one, you could see here we have the right parameter, but nothing is happening. So what we need to do is we need to have it also, we need to have in the dependency array to depend on the router that is ready. Wow, that happened really quick. Router that is ready and the router query name. Now we're loading the information. If we don't have, if we don't wait for the router and we don't have these dependencies, it won't work. So now we're setting the description, console log is working. And if you see your title one dot description, if you go into my data JSON, you could see that there it is title one description. Now, if we change this to two title two, it's pulling what's from my JSON, right? So now we have a dynamic route and I'm going to go back to one. So this is great. So we're pulling this. We're pulling this data. again. If we take off these dependencies and we refresh, it doesn't work. So this is a super, super duper key waiting for the router to return, having them as dependencies. And now we're in a great place. We're using everything. Now, this is kind of pure react, right? Now, what about Next.js has a way to do this? If we were to use um, server side props, I like this. I like to use things that can port over in all different ways. I like to use the raw way. This is kind of the raw way of doing the, the, the work. But if you use server side props, you could you could avoid use effect and you can even avoid use state. I want to show you those three other ways to do this. This is option one. Let's label this option one. Now let's go to option two props right so we need to actually do get server side props which is all the way at the bottom now let me just make sure I stop option one from working so that we don't run into any problems and leave this take off this data cool I don't want nothing to interfere so now we're in option two and again this is just your boilerplate export you know get server side props now um, you could get that that's all on the documentation we're just basically exporting data, getting server side props prior to the page loading, put it in something called data export, or you can change it to data. I'm lab labeling a data export because I don't want it to override, you know, the word data I have being used prior. So I'm just using the word data export. This could be anything you want. It's going to pull the data and push it into just like we were pulling JSON. The difference here is we cannot use a raw JSON file. We actually have to rely on Next.js's API to export JSON. So before we can test this, we need to have JSON available, which we don't have because to use server-side props, we need a URL. I'm going to be, um, let's go to the API and let's make another folder and let's call it blog data.js. This is a basically a file really, which is node, just exporting JS. Um, and all it's doing here, this is boilerplate, you get it from the hello. It's just basically exporting the same JSON. It's just spitting out the same JSON. And we could test this out by going to um, API, um, API blog data. Done. So we got the blog data. Now we're going to go back. And this is only for server side props. Now we're going to do option two with a use effect. So we're still going to be using a use effect. So I can take copy of actually, you know what? Let's just take a copy of option one, but we are just not going to be using the JSON. We're going to be using the other item. So it's a copy of option one, but it's just basically stopping. Um, so this should be data export. Um, so sorry, there's one other step prior. We need to actually take this and we need to put it here. So we need to send the data to the page. That's just typical server side of props. Now we need to change this from data to data export. So if we see here, it worked already, okay? Clone of option one, but using server-side props. But here's the cool thing. We don't need to wait for the router anymore. That is what is super cool. The only thing is you're stuck on get server-side props. So if there's any updates to server-side props in your app, you need to make sure. That's the only reason why I don't like to stick to every single only Next.js things. But 
um, you do have to do that. So now you can get rid of the dependency and I'm refreshing to show you it works and we can don't have to wait for the router to be ready. And that's what's super cool. I'm actually curious if we, yeah, you do need to use the, the router, right? Because you need the information, right? But you don't have to worry about that. So if we change this to title two, boom, it's putting title description two, right? So it's pulling the same information. So that's what's cool about option two. But I wanna show you also the next option. So let's go to option three. And again, this is server side props. I'm going to basically hide this. So should be doing nothing here. Now we have option three. What's cool about this is that you don't necessarily need the, the use effect here because we're sending the data directly. The page is not going to work until it has the data anyway. Cool. So let's take this and let's just basically take the data export and let's just do the same thing. All right. So now what we'll show you now we have too many renders, but we don't we that's because we're setting state. Then you need to use effect, but we don't need to use state because we have the data there because with Next.js, the data is there prior to the page load. So now all we all we have to do is actually literally just set the variable. So we're doing the same thing. We're saying, hey, if oh, let's just make sure we have description. Oh, we can't say state. So there's an error, but I'll show you how to fix that. We're just saying, hey, this description, give it the item.name and item.description. But again, because our description is called state, so I'm going to hide this and I'll make a new variable called let description because it's no longer state. And look at this. We have no errors. We're not relying on use effect. We're not even relying on state. Cool. Look at this. If I change, no errors. Title one, the code is just so easy. And the reason why this works is that Prior to page load, Next.js is server side rendered. It's sending us the data, so we don't have to wait for anything. The fourth option is actually doing all this inline, which again, I don't only recommend, but sometimes you need to do it, which is you want to just do nothing up above and you want to just do it right inline. This was cool about server side props. So we literally are going to do the same thing. So I'm going to hide this. I'm going to make option four inline. So we're going to take the same, right? But we're going to do it inline so all we have to do here is just let's go into our return um let's actually let's just make sure that we return this a little cleaner all right so i'm just cleaning this up a bit and making sure it you know it's it's there and then now so basically what we're going to do is take the curly braces open it up inside and place the code in there okay let's just make sure i feel like we might have an error here let's just make sure we are yeah we're good to go i think we just have a little bit of error here let's take off the colon the semicolon and that should be about it so we're basically again we, we've taken the same code from option three but removing the semicolon because after those errors when it's in great so but now that this is in line right we need to actually output what we need to output so what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this off and we're going to be returning you know, which is this is JSX return. It's the semicolons during these errors. And let's just save this JSX and now actually refresh. So again, these semicolons throw these errors. But now what we're doing is just returning it raw inline onto the like just HTML. Now you do need this key. So generally, like you'll see the error, like that everything needs to have a key when you're duplicating, you know, a key prop. So just pull that from there. And now we have this item dot one and we're just again, nothing above all in line because of get server side props. This is not really possible without get server side props because you'll still need to use, it's possible, but you'll need state and you'll, use, you'll need use effect because you need to make sure everything loads. When you use server side props, you know that the data has, has arrived, so you don't need use effect. So in this case, let's actually make sure this works and we'll do title two. It's all doing the same thing. Again, I you know wanted to copy paste some of this so I don't make these like syntax errors, but what it's doing is it's all pretty much the same, just looping over. Oh, it looks like I have a duplicate here. Well, that's an accident here. So I'll refresh. Um, it should just be if and then return and then that. So and then just returning. So it's just some duplicate information, but that's it. It's basically returning JSX, returning the HTML. And I hope you guys have liked this. There's four different ways. Again, to reiterate, option one is using React. Option two is using server side props, but just doing it in different ways where you can use use effect. You don't have to rely or you don't use use effect or you get rid of the state or you just go straight in line. 
all of these things are key because you never know when you might need them. You know, there are good practices, but the truth is in development, there are times when you really do need to just rely on something and skip some of the best practices. I hope you guys like this. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video.